Hello, it's Billy from Insanity Samples, and today we are taking a quick look at how we can get a little more out of your contact libraries as a contact owner, but perhaps someone that never dabbles in the mysterious spanner back end of the software. We'll primarily tackle two areas of this section of contact, insert effects section, and how to change the attack, decay, sustain, or release of a sample set. The latter will give us the ability to adjust a specific articulation's ADSR settings within a given library when this isn't available in the front end interface. It's worth noting that oftentimes these elements are controlled at the script level, so adjusting won't take hold. So we're looking at the flute from Neo Woodwinds as our example here. Let's dive into the back of contact and start by adding an effect. Input and send effects are global generally and will work on all samples in the instrument. As you can see here, there is a delay loaded later in the chain, placed in this way so we can place other non-time based effects behind it and then go on to be affected by the delay, such as compression or distortion or stereo modeling, etc. We're going to add another reverb. This instrument comes packed with one, of course, but if you want to add another reverb for deeper complexity or to add a special effect like a reverse reverb, then this is a good option. So we click the section for the chain we want. For the sake of this example, I'm just going to plumb into the first slot and we're going to place a fairly long reverb in and hit the reverse button. Very cool. So this premise can be used ad nauseum to include any number of effects you want from the list or any contact library, regardless of how it comes packaged to you. Okay, so the second tip we're going to look at is adjusting the release time of a specific articulation. In this case, our Mercatos currently have a setting that allow for the full sample to fade away, even if you play a very short note. We're going to change it so that the release is nearly immediate and more reactive to your input. A quick side note here, with the upcoming release of the next installment of the Neo series, ADSR controls alongside some other scripting updates will be added to the front end GUI of the Neo series as a whole. For all existing owners, it will be free, of course. But for now, this is how we can do it ourselves from the back end of contact. So an important part of this process is to ensure you are in the expert view on the left hand side panel of contact. This allows you to see all the groups within the instrument. Each group represents a set of samples for any given articulation along with any multi-mic setups and round robins you may have. So often there may be many groups that make up just one articulation. For example, our Mercato samples are housed within 16 groups that all work together to create the singular articulation of Mercato. Named here with the generic naming of long staccatos or in essence our longest short notes. So we navigate to the Stack L collection, which goes from group 36 to group 51. If you click the first group, then shift click the last group, all 16 groups will highlight. Now a vital step here is to right click and select set edit flag. This now means we are adjusting all 16 groups together and we are not accidentally adjusting other groups that may have been previously selected. You'll see the tick box next to the selection light up. This indicates that it has worked. Now we can open the modulation tab and from here we can see our release time is set to 1.5 thousand milliseconds so that our samples fade out naturally over a longer period of time, allowing for most of the Mercato sample to play out. This is what we want to change to better interact with our physical input on our keyboards. So let's simply dial this down to around 70 milliseconds, though this can be to taste. This is just a very short release that best emulates a short phrasing without using the staccatissimo articulation. Okay, all done. So from here, we can of course use these techniques to add multiple effects to instruments that do not have them pre-baked into the front end interface and also adjust our modulation settings at the group level. Two very useful things to be able to do that will up your contact game and make the software more useful to you. Last note, it's best when dabbling with this stuff to save yourself a new version of the instrument, just in case anything goes horribly wrong. Do this by simply clicking the floppy disk and saving the instrument under a new name or version number. Once you know you've made the changes correctly, you can always reopen the official version and save over that for permanent setting changes, as closing contact at this point without saving the instrument will remove any changes you have made. Okay, a brief look under the hood for some additional useful capabilities that can be applied across the board to any of your collections. Thanks for watching.